This is Villa View. Coming up, Matt Kendrick dissects a disappointing day out at Wembley. We hear off James Milner and Carlos Quella, and we look forward to Villa's next cup challenge. Hello and welcome to Villa View. I'm Andy Walker and as ever today I'm joined in our Fort Dunlop studios by our man at Villa, Matt Kendrick. Welcome Matt. Hello. Well of course the last time we were here we had the carding up here clad in uh, Manchester United colours. It still is clad in Manchester United colours and it's not back in Birmingham. Just reflect briefly on that uh, day out on Sunday. Well it was a little bit flat wasn't it ultimately. It was an anti-climax sadly. Um, Villa started wonderfully. Uh, Gabby Bonhoor bon- burst past Vidic, as we all know, and then uh, the big turning point of the game after just five minutes, when uh, Vidic um, took illegal action to uh, to bring down Bonhoor. Phil Dow rightly awarded a penalty. We all expected to see the red card um, flash towards the Serbian defender. Alas, it never came. Um, and from then on, United, although James Milner took the penalty away, United did what United do best: um, showed their class to, to come from behind to. Um, Record another victory for them and a 30, 32nd trophy for Sir Alex Ferguson. Well, we caught up with Villa stars James Milner and Carlos Quella after the 2 1 defeat to Manchester United, and here's what they had to say. I don't know, the game was very uh, quality. You never, you never know, but I'm, I'm not happy because we, of we have been lost the best, the, the first car for us. How are you? We didn't play too bad, but it's, that's not what it's about. And in finals, it's about getting a result and, and winning the game. And unfortunately, we didn't do that today. Um, obviously, come up against an experienced side who's been to a lot of finals, and maybe that told in the end. But you know, I don't think we did ourselves any harm. I thought we put in a good performance. We had chances and, and, and could have at least equaled the game, if not uh, gone and got a winner. They had chances as well. It was a pretty open game. Yeah, obviously, we're desperate to, to get to two finals anyway. But I think having been here and been so close and like I say, performed pretty well and, and not quite got what we deserved. And after a good cup run, it's it's maybe given us that extra incentive to go again and, and uh, make sure that we reach that second final if we can. That was the views of uh, Quella and Milner after the uh, game at Wembley. In your opinion, what went wrong for Villa on Sunday? I think after a bright start, I just think they, they ran out of steam. Um, Manchester United are so good at controlling games. Um, Villa just didn't seem to quite know how to break them down. Um, Villa caused them plenty of problems early on, particularly with Gabby's pace, but United decided to retreat and defend deeper, and that's probably been an issue for Villa most of the season. They love hitting teams on the counter-attack, but when they're, they're charged with the task of having to break teams down that are behind the ball, they sometimes struggle. So, on to some of our viewers' thoughts now, and unsurprisingly, we've been inundated with questions about that penalty incident in the third, fourth minute. Should have been a red card is pretty much the uh, the opinion from those out there. Is that your opinion as well, Matt? I think so, yeah. I think uh, general consensus was it was a, a nailed on red card, really. Uh, referee Phil David ironically said before the game that he didn't want to become the story of the afternoon. And then, um, lo and behold, that's exactly what he became. Um, he was right to award the penalty. He was a clear foul uh, in the box. Um, fair play to Gabby. He showed his... Um, he showed true speed, didn't need to get away from mm. Vidic in the first place. But how you could suggest that he wasn't denying a goal scoring opportunity with that foul, um, I don't know, because he clearly was. He clearly, clearly should have been a red card. There. After the game on Sunday, Richard Dunn said that he didn't want to see his end enough because it made no difference at Villa Park, and plus he didn't want it to ruin the Cup final as a spectacle. It's quite a refreshing route from a, a footballer, wasn't it? It is. I think Richard Dunn's one of the must be one of the game's most generous footballers. Obviously, when um, when the Republic of Ireland were denied um, a World Cup place by Thierry Henry's handball, uh, Richard Dunn was seen having a little friendly chin wag with Henry on the pitch at the end of the game. So he seems to be a, a special breed of footballer in that he, he kind of he's very tolerant and understanding. There's one other question here. Uh, Paul Roberts in Sutton Coalfield has uh, emailed us, and he's concerned that. There might be a repeat of the Moscow effect from last season, of course. Villa went out of the UA, what was the UEFA Cup then to CSKA Moscow. And it resulted in a bit of a nosedive in form. Do you see that happening on this occasion? It could happen. I don't think it will happen. Um, I'd say the main difference between that season and this season is that Villa have got, well, they've got a year's experience for a start. And they've also got three, three characters in that dressing room. Ironically, it was three characters who perhaps let them down a little bit on 
on Sunday, but Richard Dunn, James Collins and Stephen Warnock have added an extra resilience and extra belief to that dressing room. It's not going to be easy and Villa need to not feel sorry for themselves. They need to get this kind of carnival cup hangover out of the system straight away. Um, regardless of Reading's form, you'd hope that Villa, especially I think Villa will put a strong side out there now. Uh, they'll have had seven days respite before that game to prepare for this. You'd hope that Villa would be able to go down there and cope with whatever Reading can throw at them. and get a result that sends them straight back to Wembley in the semi-final. OK, thanks Matt for joining us and thank you for joining us. Of course it was a disappointing day and it was also notably a disappointing birthday for Martin O'Neill. But let's hope they can bring him a belated present in the form of an FA Cup. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. <laughs>